So let me be the guy. You you posted a meme on Twitter recently where there's there's, there's like a, a row of urinals. A guy just walks all the way across. Oh, sure, yeah. And he tells you about crypto. <laughs> so, 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 this, so, this, I mean, that's happened to me so, so many times. I think maybe even literally. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you think, technologically speaking, there's any room for ideas of smart contracts or, or so on? Because you mentioned laws. Um, that's an interesting implement use of things like smart contracts to implement the laws by which governments function. Like something built on Ethereum or maybe a dog coin that enables smart contracts somehow. I never, I don't quite understand this whole smart contract thing. Um, you know, I, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so it's I'm a, too dumb to understand smart contracts. Um, <laughs> that's a good line. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my general approach to any kind of like deal or whatever is just make sure there's clarity of understanding. That's the most important thing. Right. Um, and, and just keep any kind of deal very, very short and simple, plain language. Um, and just make sure everyone understands this is the deal. Does everyone is it clear? Um, and uh, and and what are the consequences if various things don't happen? Um, but usually deal, deals are um, you know business deals or whatever are way too long and complex and overly lawyered and pointlessly. You mentioned that uh, Doge is the, the people's coin. Yeah, um, and you said that you were literally going SpaceX may consider literally putting uh, a Doge coin on the moon. Is, yeah. it, is this something you're still considering? Uh, Mars, perhaps? Uh, do you think there's some chance, we've talked about political systems on Mars, that uh, Doge coin is the, the official currency of Mars at some <laughs> point in the future? Well, I, I think Mars itself will need to have a different currency because you can't synchronize due to sp speed of light. Hmm. Or not easily. Um, so it must be completely standalone from Earth. Well, yeah, because the the Mars is at closest approach. It's four light minutes away, roughly, and then at furthest approach, uh, it's roughly twenty light minutes away, um, maybe a little more. Um, so you can't really have uh, something synchronizing. You know, if you if the, if you've got a twenty minute speed of light issue, if it's got a one minute blockchain, uh, it's it's not going to synchronize properly. Um, so Mars would, need, would I, I don't know if Mars would have a cryptocurrency as a thing, but probably, seems likely, um, but it would be some kind of localized uh, thing on Mars. Um, and you let the people decide. Yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the, the future of Mars should be up to the Martians. Uh, yeah, so, um, I mean, I think the cryptocurrency thing is an interesting approach to reducing the um, error in the the database that is called money. Um, you know, I think I have a pretty deep understanding of the of what money actually is on a practical day-to-day -day basis because of PayPal. Um, you know, we really got in deep there. Um, and r right now the money system actually for you know, practical purposes is 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 really a bunch of uh, heterogeneous uh, mainframes running uh, old COBOL. <laughs> okay, you mean literally? That's literally that, that literally what's happening in yep. batch mode. Okay, in batch mode. Yeah, and I pity the poor bastards who have to maintain that code. Okay, that's a that's a pain. That's pain. Not even Fortran. It's COBOL. Yep, it's COBOL. It's like, and they still the ba banks are still buying mainframes in twenty twenty one. And running ancient COBOL code, uh, and uh, you know the the Federal Reserve is like probably even older than the, what the banks have, and they have an old COBOL <laughs> mainframe. <laughs> and so now, the, and and so the, the the government effectively has editing privileges on the on the money database, um, and they use those editing privileges to um, make more money <laughs> whenever they want, and this increases the error in the database that is money. So if you, I think money should really be viewed through the lens of uh, information theory, and uh, and so it's uh, you know kind of like uh, like an internet connection. Like what's the bandwidth, uh, you know, to total bit rate? Uh, what is the latency, jitter, uh, packet drop? Uh, you know, errors in, errors in the network uh, communication. 
So think of money like that, basically. Um, I think that's probably the right way to think of it. And and then say what what system, uh, from an information theory standpoint, allows an economy to function the best, uh, and you know, um, crypto is an attempt to reduce the the error uh, in, uh, in in money that is contributed by uh, governments uh, di diluting the money supply uh, as basically a pernicious fo pernicious form of taxation. So both policy in terms of with inflation and actual like technological cobalt cryptocurrency takes us into the 21st century in terms of the actual systems that allow you to do the transaction, to store wealth, all those kinds of things. Like I said, just in think theory. of money as information. People um, often will think of money as having power in and of itself. Um, it does not. It, money is, uh, is information and it, it does not have power in and of itself. Uh, the, like, the, you know, again, applying the, the physics tools of thinking about things in the limit. Is helpful if you are stranded on a tropical island, um, and uh, you have a trillion dollars. It's useless because there's no there's no resource allocation. Mon money is a database for resource allocation, but there's no resource to allocate except yourself. So money is useless. Um, uh, if you're stranded on a desert island with no food, you'd uh, all the Bitcoin in the world will not stop you from starving. Yeah. So, um, so like I said, just just think of money as as a database for resource allocation um, across time and space, and um, and then what 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 system uh, it, it is what what in what form should that that database or data system, what, what, what would be most effective? Now, the, 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 there's a, there is a fundamental issue with, um, say, Bitcoin in its current form, uh, in that it's the transaction volume is very limited. Um, and uh, the latency, it's, it's the, the latency for, for a properly confirmed transaction is too, is too long, much longer than you'd like. So it's not, it's actually not great from, um, Transaction volume standpoint or latency standpoint. Um, uh, so it is perhaps useful as as to so, to solve an aspect of the money database problem, uh, which is the sort of store of wealth or an, an, an accounting of relative obligations, I suppose. Um, but it is not useful as a currency, as a day to day currency. But people have proposed different technological solutions. Like lightning. Yeah, Lightning Network and the layer two technologies on top of that. I mean, it's it's all, it seems to be all kind of a trade-off, but the point is, it's kind of brilliant to say that just think about it, information, think about what kind of database, what kind of infrastructure enables that yeah, exchange so say like you're operating an economy um, and you need to have some thing that it, uh, allows for the efficient, to, to, to have efficient, uh, value ratios between products and services. So you've got this massive number of products and services and you need to, you, you can't just barter. barter. <laughs> it's just like, that would be extremely unwieldy. Uh, so you need something that gives you the, the a, 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 a ratio of exchange between goods and services. Um, and, and then something that allows you to uh, shift obligations across time like debt. Debt and equity shift obligations across time. Then what does what what does the best job of that? Um, part of the reason why I think there's some um, merit to Dogecoin, even though it was obviously created as a joke, um, is that it it actually does have a much higher uh, transaction volume capability than Bitcoin, um, and the you know the, the the costs of doing a transaction the the, the Dogecoin fee is is very low. Like right now, if you want to do a Bitcoin transaction, the price of doing that transaction is very high. So you could not use it effectively for most things. Um, and and nor, nor could it even scale to a high volume. Um, uh, and, and when Bitcoin was you know started, I guess around 2008 or something like that, um, the internet connections were much worse than they are today, like order of magnitude, 
couple. I mean, it, there's the way way worse, you know, in 2008. So, so like having a you know a small uh, block size or whatever is you know and and a long synchronization time is uh, made sense in 2008. But to you know 2021 or fast forward 10 years, it, it's like it's it's like comically low. You know, it's a uh, so, um, and I think there's some value to having a linear increase in the amount of currency that uh, is generated. Um, so, because some amount of the currency, you'd like, like, if a, if a, if a, if a currency is too deflationary, or, or like, uh, or should say, if 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 a, if a currency is expected to increase in value over time, you, there's reluctance to spend it. Because you're like, oh, I, if I, I'll just hold it, and not spend it, because its scarcity is increasing with time. So if I spend it now, then I will regret spending it. So I will just, you know, hold it. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but if there's some dilution of the currency occurring over time, that's that's more of an incentive to use it as a currency. So um, those coins, somewhat randomly, has uh, a um, just a, a fixed a, a number of of sort of coins or hash strings that uh, are generated every year. So there's, there's some inflation, but it's not a percentage base. It's, a, it's, it's so the, the, it's a fixed number. So the percentage of inflation will necessarily decline over time. Um, so it, it just, I, I, I'm not saying that it's like the ideal system for a currency, but I think it actually is uh, just fundamentally better than anything else I've seen just by accident.